tonight. You. <laughs> what do you think he means? Tonight, you. <laughs> like he threatened me or something. I guess game theory was right after all. Truly the player character is the third black hand. Too bad there's no paired whips though. So Cirrus's quest ended with Lothric and Lorien. So that's done and dusted sadly. Given to Knights of the Sunless Realms who serve the Nameless Moon. Scales with Int, which is rare for a mir miracle catalyst. It's compatible with the Dark. In the Sunless Realms, this fact is related first as an initial warning. And it has poise casting. Hell yeah. Really cool catal <laughs> yeah, catalyst. Really cool talisman. I barely ever use it because I never really get to this part of the game. And it's always annoying playing as like a different kind of magic build because I'll often just play as bloody pyro most of the time. And then I'll stick to it. Anyway, this gentleman acquired something for us. Let's talk. Well, look at you. The luckiest man in the world. I just got hold of some truly fine treasure. And for you, I'll practically give it away. <laughs> We're just a couple of outcasts. Let's make the best of it. <laughs> That's what he's got us. Not a lot, but... Uh, sad, what happened to Grey Rat? So I've... Well, I'm re-recording this, actually, because I wasn't happy with how it turned out. There, were, there was, like, recording issues and other shit. Um, so I have the clip of what he says when you do buy something. So here's what he says when you don't buy something specifically after talking to him. Once he's come back. Now, just wait. That's the best you can do. Bloody hell. <laughs> Keep those purse strings nice and tight. So tight they can choke you. Oh, hello again. Welcome to Patch's Boutique of Wonders. <laughs> Can't resist it, can you? My sumptuous selection. Thanks, good compere. yourself to Rosaria of the Cathedral of the Deep. chosen to serve Rosaria after all. She will be pleased with me for finding her another finger. <laughs> but be warned, my friend. Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free, unchained. Like Yellowfinger, you can choose to believe that all fingers share camaraderie. But do not force your romance upon the rest of us. <laughs> Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free, unchained. You are free to believe that all fingers share camaraderie, but do not force your romance upon the rest of us.
Rosaria must be so pleased. An arcane orb left on Rosaria's corpse. Have faith her soul can be retrieved by invading the world of her killer and returning victorious. The black eye is a proof of vengeance, but often appears serene as it casts its gaze towards... Sword precious to Anri, another unkindled, the dullest type of blade found in the ruined land of Astora. Only it was once the sword of an earnestly noble figure, and its attacks are boosted by that elusive, essential property unique to humans. Luck. Boy, been meaning to uh, grab that for a while. Hmm. Well, anyway. Ah, uh, time to merc uh, Leonhard. Now, I've got to um, either run past the Silver Knight's End, the Slimes, and the Deacons, or I can just teleport. So I'm thinking I'm going with the latter. I'm thinking that's probably the faster way, to be completely honest. Hmm. So, um, this is, this of course, is a very subtle nod to Dark Souls 1, where there is a character who will remain unnamed in case anyone who's watching this hasn't played DS1, uh, who kills the Firekeeper that governs the main hub bonfire, which means you can't rest there anymore. And you have to come to Analondo to kill said prick by invading their world. Again, just a level of nuance and subtlety DS2 could never hope to achieve. Hmm. You feel the black eye orb quivering. That said, I do like the uh, like the idea of a theory, if you will, of Miyazaki being like, "Are oh, you like ref references? Are you fucks?" Have all the references you can bloody stomach, you idiots. <laughs> Never expected to see you here. Couldn't resist her any longer in all her festering glory. And now you want to ravage her soul as well. I sow the seeds. I, Leonard, swear so on my vows to the goddess. Yeah, so that's what it does. Um, pretty cool. It's um, unfortunately not that fantastic of a weapon, but man, is it cool. You know, if you're not being meta, who cares, really? And now it's ours. Well, in about 10 seconds. Also weird. You can't do anything uh, after killing him. You can with Cirrus. You can with Anri. You can fighting Hodrick. The implication being fighting Creighton as well. But for some reason, yeah, nothing there. 
But yeah, I genuinely love the, the idea of Miyazaki being like, okay, fuck you guys. You want bloody references? Take all the references you can have. I don't, I don't understand it. Thought of Vardy video went in, mad in 15. Oh, I fucked that up. I'm stopping Dumb Simpsons reference. It's a cool weapon, this. That said, um, unless you want to piss off Cirrus, which isn't advisable first time through, you get this really, really late. And uh, at least two of the DLC bosses I can think of don't give a shit about magic. One's freed, the other's mid-air. Hooray. Leonhardt's weapon of choice. A type of shotel imbued with the power of the moon. Ha, ah, a shotel. Huh, that's weird. Hmm. Leonhard is si <laughs> Leonhard set out on a journey of rebirth, but decided instead to serve the goddess as a knight. And inherited this weapon. Crescent blade. Assume her broad stance. And fire off crescent moon blades. Of course, we got his dope little pirate hat. The silver mask. Whoops. Took it off too. Mm. Belong to Leonhard, you don't say. In his youth, he suffered grave burns to his entire body. His face in particular, which he hid beneath his mask, was terribly scalded. Played too much Pokemon Showdown, obviously. He abstained from resorting, uh, restoring these injuries, even after becoming a finger of Rosaria. Speaking of which... Soul of Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth. Stolen by Leonhard. Return this to an extant corpse. Extant corpse. And Mother Rosaria will spring back to life as if nothing had ever happened. Well, I mean, we're basically done. That's that's actually it. Um, I can buy Leonhard stuff. There's Lorien stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, Cirrus is set. I'm pretty sure I bought, right? Or is this... Might have been... No, yeah, cool, I have it. This is before I travel back in time. Because I was like, ah, oh, fuck this recording, let's just try it again. Uh, Elgato screwed up on me, audio quality was a bit iffy. Hopefully it's not so much this time. As it says, um, cast a feminine silhouette, and I ain't gonna judge, but... In my lowly opinion, I don't think the beard really suits, unfortunately. If you have a different hat on, I can imagine it, but yeah, very based on Gwendolyn's set from DS1. And pretty sure this is where a lot of the idea for the Pontiff um, Knight and Pontiff Fi and the Fire Witch armor came from, actually. Looking at the little skirt. Skirt? <sighs> Fucking... Oh, dress, sorry. Fucking touch bar. Being that. But yeah. Alright, I think we're done. I mean, I can read Laurie and stuff, but that's really it. I'm just happy I could finally record this again. Speaking of which, I'll have Leonhard's stuff farmed up. I passed Laurie and stuff. Armor of Lothric's older brother, Lorien. This black dyed brass helm is patterned with flame. He was raised as a knight and is said to have been left mute and crippled by his brother's curse. It is also said that Lorien, in fact, wished it so. Could just be my interpretation upon looking at this, but kind of reminds me of the Sunlight Maggot from Dark Souls 1, which might be a bit of a weird reach, but I still kind of get that feeling. Really dope helmet. I'll, I'll farm all this stuff up later. Um, yeah. So now it's uh, to bash my time to bash my head against a wolf. I genuinely don't know if this is going to be the same part or if that's going to be split up with the at least three or four attempts I'm going to take bashing my head against Freed. So, we'll see how we go. I'll chuck these in eventually, uh, just before Solar Cinder. That really does look like a uh, big old Bloodborne, don't it? I don't think I read this one properly. Became a Lord by Devouring Men. But this was disillusioned, but was disillusioned with his throne, and so took to devouring gods instead. 
perfect, um, you know, the perfect bloodline uh, technique. Was was it the Huga? Um, the fucking what's that Naruto hilarious crackpot theory? The um, eugenics program um, Hanada's father came up with. That's some good shit. Anyway, I'm done. Bye. Hey, banana. I want you to meet the enforcer. I want my name to be Spaghetti. The hell you looking at? No, please, Spaghetti, no, no, please, Spaghetti!